today we are going to do our final walkthrough of our 2011 ATC Motive. It is a 34 foot gooseneck, eight and a half feet wide, eight feet tall, and it has been amazing. And we've had it for three and a half years, something like that. Uh, it is in the final stages of how we are going to own it. Uh, we do plan to sell it very soon. Um, but I want to show you what we've done to it in the three and a half years of ownership. All right, we'll start up front. Uh, as you can see, it is full width on the front, eight and a half feet wide, uh, not short bed friendly, can be pulled by a short bed, but very carefully. We did put the uh, B and W hitch extender on here, along with our seven pin connector. Uh, we added a DC to DC converter, and that's what this plug is for. Underneath the front, we have lights. So when you're setting up at night or you wanna do anything at night, you can press the switch. That turns both of these on. Lights this whole area up very nicely. Uh, it does have a 30 amp RV connection here. And these are just ports for the wires from the DC to DC converter. These are our controls for our electric jacks, which we added here. When we purchased this trailer, this entire front was solid and I needed storage, uh, so I made this door. And we store chairs and carpets and wires and hoses here. We also added a propane tank. Uh, this is to run the uh, stove. We have a two burner stove inside. That's the only thing that runs on propane at the moment. Over on this side, um, we have our power watchdog surge protector. Uh, this thing is awesome. It uses a Bluetooth app. You can see what kind of power you're using. We have two 60 amp hour lithium iron phosphate batteries. And there's our DC to DC converter. This is our Pioneer mini split. It is a 12,000 BTU. It has been awesome. It is running on heat right now and it's as quiet as it can be it's been this quiet since new we mounted it uh, high up so it would avoid hitting the truck and that's also why we have to use a hitch extender it works perfectly you can make a full 90 degree turn and you do not hit you don't even come close to this underneath we have an outdoor shower and it has a quick connect for a water hose uh, it's hot and cold water on the passenger side, you can see we added a window here and there. Uh, these are both emergency windows. And there's your info uh, for the trailer. It does have 6,000 pound axles. And this payload number uh, has obviously changed a little since we added the inside equipment. And I'll throw that up on the screen so you can see where we're at now. This trailer came equipped with a generator door and at one time it went further back but as we built the inside we had to modify that which is hard to see because we keep all our chairs in here and we have a table back there and our spare tires behind that so still quite a bit of room so this is our freshwater inlet and underneath is where we have our sewer connections as you can see here's a black tank that's 30 gallons and then we have a another tank there this is our gray tank that's a 30 gallon and it connects to what was a spare tire holder that we sealed off and that's another 30 gallons for gray water you have 60 gallons you have your standard um, dump valve here with black tank on this side and gray on that side uh, these are your low point drains for your hot and cold water we mounted these Black Lion 14 ply tires about a year ago, and they have been outstanding. Uh, the axles are eight lug. So coming around to the back, uh, this is a seven foot opening on the door. On the camping side, we added a carefree uh, 21 foot awning. It's beautiful, works great. We added a few outdoor lights here and another window. We also added a TV mount uh, so we can move our TV outside and watch movies. Uh, we added this grab handle which folds up for travel. Very helpful to get in and out. Uh, the trailer 
came with this step that slides in and out it's very nice it's very very solid and it also uses a massive walk-in door so let's go inside and uh i'll show you around Uh, this is your loading door and as you can see the ramp does have a I guess this may be a four foot extension that lays down so you get a nice smooth transition onto the door when it's all open up this is our Murphy bed it is a full-size bed uh, we have this futon here that originally this was going to be a temporary thing um, but we ended up ordering a new mattress for it and it sleeps great it sits great we really like it so we've left it in uh, if we load a side by side in here we do have to push it all the way up front kind of underneath this table uh, on the right side and we can still fit a four seater side by side in here again the window we installed it is an emergency exit has handles on each side and the whole thing just pushes out on the opposite side we have our TV up top and our fireplace uh, the fireplace has storage on each side and above the fireplace. So beside the fireplace, we built this bar uh, so we could sit and eat here. A lot of times we just uh, store things on that. But uh, we do sit and eat there every now and again. And it gives you a nice view outside wherever you're camping. We've got a nice view there. Uh, we also added a couple outlets here to keep phones charged and things of that nature. In our kitchen, uh, we purchased this Thompson refrigerator uh, from Sam's Club. It was only a couple hundred dollars and it's worked really well. It is an electric only. We run it off of our inverter when traveling and it has worked really well for us. Since the fridge sat so low to the ground, I built a base for it to sit on and we store water and things like that under there. Uh, we built the cabinets here. Um, we've got quite a bit of storage underneath. And you can also see that our water pump is under here and all the plumbing. Uh, this goes out to the freshwater tank, which we have 60 gallons of freshwater capacity. I installed this valve here um, to fill our freshwater tanks so we can connect to the freshwater outlet and open that valve and it bypasses the pump and goes down to the tanks and fills our tanks up for us. Uh, we don't have a gravity feed for filling our freshwater, we just use it that way and it's worked really well for us. Under the sink is where we have our electric hot water heater. It is a Camp Lux six gallon. It is very consistent with the uh, water temperatures. And we had the uh, on-demand gas at first. I think it was a gas land. Uh, it was very sporadic. It would, it would get really, really hot, really, really cold. It was just all over the place. So we switched to this Camp Lux tank and it has been wonderful. We did go with the uh, single basin sink. We really like that. It's nice and deep. And we put this uh, tall faucet on there. Has to pull out and a couple different settings for your water. So we have a two burner stove underneath the cutting board. Instead of building cabinets up top, we just built this shelf and we use these baskets. This is probably the best system we ever came up with and we didn't realize it at the time. But these baskets, uh, we keep all our food and, and things like that in them. Uh, when we get home, we can just throw things in these baskets and take them inside our house. And we unload everything in no time. Underneath the shelving, I added two lights. It gives us a lot more light when we're over here cooking or washing dishes. That's controlled with this switch. And this switch is the water pump. And... That's worked well. These switches are great, by the way. Uh, you can get them on Amazon. I'll post a link down below. They just work really well. They're nice and solid. So we have another outlet, and this is our control for our inverter. It is go-wise. It is 1500 watt, and we can turn it on and off from this point here. It's 
been very nice. And this is a battery monitor so we can keep an eye on things when we're camping. One question I get a lot about the mini split is how well does it work in this location? Uh, as you can see, it's located above the door, pretty close to the front. And it really does a great job with the front. It keeps it nice and cool or nice and hot. And uh, with the back, it does an okay job, but we use this fan to circulate air uh, to the back. And that just makes all the difference. Um, with that fan, when I'm sleeping in the very back, uh, it does keep it comfortable. Right by the door, we have a key rack and then a few other switches. Uh, this is our carefree awning control. You can turn it on and off. And then the extend and retract is just a one push deal. Uh, when you turn it on, you want to open the awning out. You just hit extend. It opens up automatically and stops automatically. Super nice. Uh, hit retract and it comes in automatically. Very easy to use. This is our mini split controller. At the moment, a mini split is the way to go if you're going to convert a cargo trailer. I will say that a lot of companies are working on rooftop units for RVs that are getting close to being like a mini split. So I would keep my eye out for that. Uh, a rooftop unit would be nice as far as ease of installation. The mini split was not hard to install, but you are going to have to deal with this hose and you got to run it somewhere. So that's the only, probably the biggest downfall to the install. Uh, the install was extremely easy. I did it. I've never done anything like that. So uh, I, I just breezed right through it. Nothing to it. Uh, these are another set of switches. This is for the interior lights. These are for the side lights on the outside. And this is for the light on the very back at the loading ramp. Uh, this is the Pioneer Mini Split inside unit. It is running uh, on high right now on heat. And that's as loud as it is. These are the steps going up to the upstairs. Uh, I used the aluminum frame that came with the trailer and I covered it with pallet wood and I built two pull out storage areas. There's the top one. And this is the bottom storage. It's huge. We built this to put shoes and things in. It works really well for that. Uh, we needed a door for our bathroom, so we went with the barn door, sliding style. I used this simple hook to hold it open while we're traveling. Just unhook that, and then it pulls closed. And there's not much of a gap. There's a little bit, but it's not bad. So in the bathroom, we put a 34 inch uh, corner shower. Um, it has worked really well for us. Nice and tall, you got all kinds of room in there. We installed this dramatic uh, toilet and then we installed the sink and have a little bit of storage underneath for paper towels, toilet paper, things like that. We do have a medicine cabinet here. Have a few things in. And the uh, screen is nasty on this, I gotta clean it up, but this is a Max Air fan. It has the automatic setting on it and it has a rain sensor. Uh, the fan has been amazing. I absolutely love it. One of my favorite things, when we leave it in storage, uh, you can turn on the automatic setting and I set it on 80 degrees. When it gets to be 80 degrees in here, uh, it turns on automatically and it vents the whole camper out. So this is the generator box. That gives you an idea how deep it is outside. Uh, from here down is what's on the outside unit. And from here up, all the way to the roof, is another closet. We've got a closet on each side. And we keep all our towels and things like that. Also gives you access to wires, which maybe doesn't look the best, but it is uh, very convenient when you're running new items. You do have a little bit of storage space on the side of the shower for a broom and to hang towels and things like that on. And this is our light switch for the bathroom. Okay, as we come upstairs, uh, this is our kids' room. We have three beds here for each kid. Uh, originally, we wanted to put a single bed for my wife and I, but after going up and down these steps several times, we decided that, you know, it 
it may not be for us and maybe the kids need their own space so this is why we went that way and i'm glad we did they absolutely love it now underneath the beds we put storage and they are huge it holds a lot of clothes a lot of toys a lot of anything and they're full length under each bed uh, we added a tv in the back and an outlet in each corner and the kids painted those up like they wanted them they made tie-dye curtains for their window this is also an exit window and then they wanted a chalkboard wall to draw on so we painted this with chalkboard paint well behind this bed is our electrical closet uh, as you can see we have our 12 volt uh, section here so these are the fuses for all of our 12 volt system uh, we have a lot of other fuses and things down here for our inverter system this is our go power 1500 watt inverter it has worked flawlessly i really like it at the very bottom i have a just a portable charger and that's what charges our battery system then we have an automatic transfer relay uh, this came with the trailer so i just went ahead and used that i can turn the inverter on and off with the trailer plugged into shore power and it won't kick in but as soon as i unplug it from shore power this switches over and you have inverter power and this is our breaker panel uh, and we just have it wired uh, as a main breaker and then you got a mini split and then each side of the trailer and it's as simple as that and it has worked really well for us for three and a half years okay folks that's uh, the walkthrough this is our final configuration for our trailer I hope you guys enjoyed it uh, if you want to look at the build we've got tons of videos on the build and if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer those for you. I hope you enjoyed the tour. Uh, please subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you guys next time.